Well, it is finally here. Or I should say, I finally got my email invitation to start using the, let's say, beta version of the email builder for Active Campaign. Um, last year, they announced this was coming. And they asked people to sign up if they wanted to uh, try out the new features of the email builder. And I volunteered because, yeah, I wanted to see what the new um, additions were going to be like and what the email builder was going to look like. For the longest time, this was one of the, uh, I'd say, weak spots of Active Campaign. It wouldn't, it wasn't an issue really for me because I, I. Uh, for the longest time, I coded all my emails from scratch, and then I brought them into Active Campaign and added the functionality that I needed, like automations or conditional content. But as time went on, I, I started doing less custom development and concentrated on just using the features of the um, the platform just to speed things up. Uh, like, great, uh, you could you can code emails. Congratulations, but this is really m so much faster than um, trying to code this from scratch and then testing, troubleshooting, making sure that it works with all the uh, you know email clients. It's time consuming. So eventually I gave up and decided, you know, just use the tool that is available to you and, and make the most of it. But the biggest complaint from uh, active campaign users was always the email builder. Uh, lacking in features um, and features that were present in other email marketing platforms that were not even as sophisticated as Active Campaign in terms of automations and all their stuff. But we we stuck it out because the automations available in Active Campaign were amazing and are still amazing compared to all the other uh, platforms available. Um, so let's let's get started. One of the major things they added here, and this is something that I've only seen in another email platform in terms of building out structures. Uh, well, this is that other platform called it Sections. Um, Active, Active Campaign has something called structures. And if you click here, it's essentially just like you would build a website. One column, two columns, three columns, four, one third, two thirds, two thirds, one third. So pretty much any design that you can think of, it can be done with these structures here. Um, unless you wanna get a little crazy and have six columns, then that, that's a different story, but I don't see a scenario when, where that happens or, or things are gonna look very small in six columns. Actually, they're gonna look, start to look small at four. So why just just keep it at free? Um, with the structures, you can pretty much do whatever you need to do. Like let's let's use this example. I started building out a, a campaign using their um, their new email builder, and I've already tried quite a few uh, different layouts. So let's let's go here and drop a new structure, one column. And one thing that I've, I had been looking forward to is being able to add a, a structure or a section, whatever you want to call it, and have a background image available. Meaning that you can superimpose text on top of the image. So if you go here and activate background image, I could very much use this again. The only issue is that you have to pretty much open up the image using um, a divider or content as well. So if we go to blocks here at the bottom, let's go there and add a spacer here. Uh, no, it added it at the wrong place. Let's put it in here, inside. And I'm gonna get rid of that border and the padding I'm gonna add. 40. And that's as far as it goes. So I, I can't make it any bigger than that. Um, if I were to custom code this, I'd be able to do it. But then again, I'm not doing that. Uh, and, and you can repeat it. So technically, you could actually keep repeating that, cloning it. 
No, actual oh, crap that uh, repeated the container. That's not what I wanted to do. So you have to keep track of where you're actually um, clicking because otherwise you might end up clicking the container. Okay, that's what I need, the container. Click on it and now you can go here, add another one. And this is not the best approach, but just to show you um, how you can open up this image. Because the cool thing is when you go to structure, guess what? If you go all the way to the bottom, you can add rounding corners separately. So at 10, you run the, the top left corner and top to right. Okay, and now you have nice round corners. Um, and this image, let's let's go to structure. And I want this image to be aligned to the center. There. Perfect. All right. So as you can see, um, it, it looks different than if I were to place an image that have full um, that shows the full image here. This is a background image. So it's only showing a part of the image. Um, so if we go here, preview. Oh, and this is this is another new thing. You have the preview now here in the email builder, as opposed to having to click next, go to the summary, and then do a preview there. So if we preview this, see what it looks like on mobile, uh, the rounded corners here and here, and same here on the desktop version. But again, it's it's a, a scale version showing just a specific portion of that image as a background. If you want to show the full image, then you'd have to use uh, an image container, which is what I did uh, with the bottom image. The advantage of using a background image here is, as I mentioned, as a is that uh, as I mentioned before, you can add text, superimposed text here. Why would you want to do that? In this particular case, it's not it's not going to look very good. But if you have a background image that has a portion of solid background, then you could place the the title on the solid background, and then the image you you would be able to see the rest of the image as well. So let's close that. So that's a container or a structure rather with a background image. Let's select it and then delete that. And you, uh, in the past with Active Campaign, something that people, or at least my issue was that I, I custom coded because I needed different behaviors for the text. So as you can see here, this text is left aligned. Um, but if I click here, on the mobile version, I want it to center. All right, so if we preview again, there you go. So now, the text, the he heading, really, this is uh, heading one, is center when you go on the mobile version as opposed to left align on the desktop version. So on this, you know, uh, version, it's, uh, it's almost as if you have way too many features now. Not, not a complaint, that's great because the amount of control that you have over your design is amazing. Um, they want uh, another block item that is brand new here is the timer. Now this one is because again, this is not the full uh, production version. Uh, so a, a few things are not working as fast as you think they, they would. So if you click here, I want to select a date in the future, March 30th. And I want it to be 11, uh, 2. And this works on uh, a 24-hour clock, if I'm not mistaken. So, And I can tell it the different time zones. And I want America and Toronto. All right. 
and you can select the label to be 24 pixels and the number I'm going to make it 24 as well. And while it thinks it's processing the date, the time, and it's calculating, okay, how many days and hours and minutes and seconds are left. There you go. So now it comes up. Uh, in the past, I'd have to custom code this into the, the template uh, and using a, a different application, um, a different service actually that would transform this uh, timer into an image. And that's pretty much what's happening here as well, because you have an expired timer image, um, meaning that this is also an image. Uh, it's just that, if I'm not mistaken, it's a, a GIF. And whenever you open it in a browser that doesn't support that, such as Outlook for Windows, it's just going to display the, the last time. It's going to take a screenshot and it's going to display the, the latest time when they open the email. Okay, so let's delete that. And now you also get video and it's a little bit nicer, the presentation, whereas before you, you had the control bar for the YouTube video and everything, it didn't look the best. So if you click here, let's go use this video. Copy, I'm gonna go back and place the link there. Automatically adds the alternative text for you. And as you can see, it looks a little cramped there. Um, let's see, I want custom padding here. And once I did that, be, not before, once I select the, the custom padding, that's when the video starts to look a little bit better. And I can tell it to be, you know, to match the padding of the rest of the content. There you go. And so, yeah, you don't no longer have to create your own thumbnail uh, and place it there with the link to YouTube. It does it automatically. I mean, they had this component before, but the way it displayed the video was uh, left a lot to be left left a lot to be desired. And I, I'm still not a big fan of the the black space top and bottom. But hey, if you're in a hurry, this this is a perfect solution. Just put the link, and off off you go. And it already knows that when you click on it, it's going to take you to the YouTube video. Now. Let's get rid of that. And there's also this thing called banner, which I hadn't seen before. It wasn't in the previous, I um, mean, the original version. I'm not sure what I'm gonna use it for, but playing with it, it was kind of interesting. When you click on it, you have all these different options like filters. I, I don't know. Again, I don't know when I'm gonna use it, but that's kind of cool that you don't have to uh, color the image in Photoshop and then bring it in. You, you can have the filter applied right here. Blue tint, okay. Uh, that's kind of cool. Uh, yeah, at some point I'll have a use for it. I, I just don't know what it is today. So another session, uh, another section, per, uh, sorry, another block. I get, keep getting confused with all this new terminology. So that's, that's pretty much it. Um, you also get a menu. Uh, again, not sure when I'm going to use this, but you essentially have a, a menu and you could use it for a sales email where you have like a collection that you want to link to. Uh, let's see what this looks like on mobile. Yeah, okay, just shrinks the, the items. It doesn't stack them. I don't know if that's an option to stack them on mobile. Uh, I don't see it here. It's just an option to hide the element. Yeah, you just get an option to hide the elements each individual menu, uh, depending on the platform that you're using or the device that you're using, sorry. Okay, so that's the menu. And I think at this point, I've gone through all the new blocks 
and the structure. So this is, again, the am amount of control that you get now. It's pretty good. You can add padding uh, to individual sections or containers. And, um, oh, this is another thing. Uh, and that was shown during the demo last year, or sorry, early, early January of this year, if I'm not mistaken. And this is the ability to look at code right there below the um, designer. So if you wanted to get really uh, fancy with your code, now you can do it within the uh, the builder. Uh, and again, I, you might want to use it for tags and other stuff like that, or build like containers that are completely custom in terms of uh, coding. And just click on it to get rid of it and go back to your builder. That's pretty much it for uh, this um, first look at the new Active Campaign Builder. I hope that you find it useful. If you haven't signed up or requested to have access to it, um, one thing that uh, to keep in mind, it doesn't mean if you request it, you actually have to create a, a new campaign from scratch and select this new builder um, to work with it. If, if you feel that it doesn't have all the features that you need at this particular time, uh, or that the features that you normally use are not available in this release, um, you can just go back, create a new campaign, and select the current builder, as opposed to this brand new one. Um, so that's the process that I followed. It's, it was in the instructions that I was sent via email from Active Campaign. Anyways, if you're an Active Campaign user, and you were somewhat frustrated with the features available in the email builder before, you're, be, you're gonna be pleasantly surprised with, with this new release whenever it becomes the final version. Thank you for watching.